What's up guys, welcome back, we are live, welcome back to another video here on YouTube, hope you're doing fine as always. I was thinking if I should go live or not now, wait later, but I prefer to do it now to give you the value as I can right now, as soon as possible. And today I want to talk about basically algo trading and some lessons I learned from algos. Uh, I've been running algos for the past roughly two years now. Uh, it started as, uh, more than that, but it started as alerts before, then it went to full on algos. I've been trading algos kind of full, fully automated for the past roughly six months or so. And I want to share to you some lessons I got, some things I learned from using algos and running them. And then I'll keep some time for questions. If you have any questions, you can definitely post them in the chat and we'll be able to uh, answer your question pretty soon. So if we can then dive right in. I uh, see we have no one there, so that's cool. No worries. Cool. So when I begin trading algos, just a bit of context for now. I began trading algos um, a few, so like fully demanded, like roughly six months ago. And the way this started out is I had before alerts. I was basically t taking trades based on alerts I would receive on my phone. The goal was to be able to have more time while traveling. So I was a traveling trader. I've been traveling for the past uh, five years or so, like fully traveling all the time, pretty much, and trading at the same time. Of course, with COVID, I've been in the same country for longer, but I was still like moving around, going to different places, vis visiting some areas, and that was pretty cool. So these algos helped me a lot to get more freedom for my trading. They helped me to not be there 24 sevens watching, watching the charts. They helped me to maybe like do a 20 minute of trading per day where I look at the charts, look at what's happening. Then I do my review every week. And then that's kind of what happens. Uh, then we made the switch to recently fully automated trading where instead of having these alerts that you would get on your phone, you would have to place trades manually. Um, then we went on to actually first using the same thing. I would take trades for us, for myself, but with support resistance areas that were basically identified manually. So these zones, I would have to put them on my chart every week. Based on weekly charts, the daily chart, I'll put the zones on my chart. Then the algo would take trades within those zones. And next to that, well, the next level was how can we el eliminate these zones? Because these were the only part of discretion left in my trading, these zones of support and resistance. Uh, and we ended up having a way to do it where we're looking at some numbers in the market that are always the same based on some calculations. Uh, and we can show more details on that if you want for sure in the future. So let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but I made a, that made a big difference. So then I made a quick experiment. I scaled into this fairly uh, kind of slowly. I didn't put all my capital into our goals fully estimated from the start, but I allocated some capital to it. And this is what the, um, actually not this one. This is, this is the one that I had first. So I made a lot of testing, make sure these would work long-term, make sure I was able to trade our goals fully estimated for a while. And the results were pretty good. They were quite good here. Uh, so that's kind of what we had here on uh, this graph. So this is my first portfolio of fully automated algos, where I had these algos taking trades without me doing anything, pretty much no zones, nothing of the sort. The algos run, they take trades, and then that's all good. So you can see the equity curve was decent. That was trading, by the way, only five pairs at first. I didn't want to go all in like with 20 pairs because that was a bit too crazy. So this is only five pairs together. Uh, and I have two strategies. So one is for trend, one is for reversals, but they go really well together. See, so we had a month above 10%. Uh, the other months were around like 5% with a few losing months here and there, which is part of trading as normal uh, for these kind of swing trading. And so in that case, uh, the results were quite good. Now, only in the past two months or so, I went a lot more into it. I want to, I want to find ways to optimize it. And the main reason for this is because I launched a program that's called Algo Nation uh, a, a month or so, uh, actually two months ago. And that program was designed to help traders kind of get into the world of algos, start to use algos, start to automate their trading more because a lot of people don't have time for trading, or even if they have time, they have a tough time to, uh, to do it, like spend time on the chart. They have a tough time to place the right trades. They have all these mindset issues coming in. And so I kind of did an experiment for fun. What happens if you give the algo to some people? Can they use it? Can they, good, can they get good results with it or not? And to my surprise, some people have been able to implement it really quickly because it's a good results with it. But because of that, because of now my students were using the algo, uh, it made me like feel oh, I have to do a lot more work now. I have to do a lot more testing. I have to make sure I know like which pair this works on, which pair this doesn't work on, and make sure I have like all the stats in mind for my students. I gotta be top notch if I'm gonna offer an algo as a product for my students. So what that led me to is doing a lot more testing. And here's what I came up with. So this is the same equity curve you've seen before, but this one is with a lot more pairs. 
So in this one, I combine roughly 20 pairs, and again, with two strategies. And you'll see that the results here are a lot better. Now, I don't expect everyone to use these settings. And by the way, this is back this thing, right? Just to be clear, because the fact that I didn't, I didn't trade algos in 2018, okay, this is a new algo that I've developed over the past year or so, but it wasn't there like four, four or five years ago, uh, just so you know. So that's what it is, right? So we have a lot more profit in Nasdaq, but that, that focuses more on day trading than swing trading, that particular uh, portfolio here you see on the screen. So this is just to show you like that I'm not talking about anything nonsense. I'm talking about things that I've tested in the past. And I uh, have this over here. Uh, these are all the stats in case you care about seeing the stats. Uh, I compute these stats for myself on my own personal like uh, knowledge. So I know what's going on with the algo. I know my, my statistics for my trading. And I know if you go beyond that, then I have to maybe check up on them. I have to do some work on them uh, just to, to be sure. Okay, so uh, for, so I know it sounds crazy, like 1,500% uh, over four, uh, four years and three months. So beginning of this year, uh, it's actually uh, 4.3 years. So not four years and three months. Uh, so it's, it's actually only 5% a month. 5.3% per month is the average return. And you'll see on the screen at the bottom right. Uh, so it's not, it's not that much, but because of compounding and everything, it, it makes it worse, like makes it seem like, like crazy stuff, but it's actually pretty good, pretty normal here. Uh, you'll see you have a few losing months, but overall it's uh, pretty good. Uh, here's a graph of the beginning of the year. And I'm just showing you this so that you know like what it's about and stuff. My goal here is not to show the stats only. I want to be here to bring you some value. Uh, and that's really the goal here. Welcome to uh, Tito in the chat. If you have any questions, post them in the chat below. I'll be happy to answer your questions after we are done with these lessons. All right, so first lesson I got from Algo Trading, it's a, a fairly big one, is the fact that you need to have very precise rule if you're gonna use Algo. So in the beginning, when I was like very new to Algos, I had my trading plan, so I, I took this plan that I had on paper, and I said, well, I'm just gonna copy these rules. And then I copied it, but I realized that Algo was taking a lot more trades than I would, I, I would never take manually before. Because there's all these subtleties, these things you don't think about that you see on the chart that you keep in your mind, but that are like you need to precise the algo. So you need to be very clear what's an engulfing candle with the algo. You need to be very clear what's a break of the long Is it one candlestick, two candlestick? How far can it break? How low can it break? There's a lot more rules here, a lot more factors that come into it. Uh, sometimes, like you have really tiny setups in the market, like with very small candlesticks, and these you will not take them manually. But with the algo, the algo takes them no matter what because the rules are there, you've coded the rules. And that can be a big issue. So the more precise you are, then the better you'll do with algos, that's for sure. Okay, but that's something I had to learn the hard way myself because I had no rules that were super precise and I had to kind of make those rules better. Uh, second, thing I, uh, second thing I learned here about algos is the fact that they're not a set and forget system. Like most people love algos or love EAs or whatever you, you want to call them. Because they think, oh, you just click on your platform, then you, you, like you let it run, you're making profit every day, you're pretty good, pretty happy. That's not how it works, okay? There's, there's a lot more work with algos than you think. First of all, there's the, 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 the testing. You gotta do some back testing time to time. You gotta kind of like check on, check on different pairs, see how different pairs perform. Uh, then you gotta do some research on how to improve it. Then you gotta get some data to be able to set, test your algo. Then you gotta forward test it. So every couple of months, you wanna make sure it's like working well and the, the, the stats are still as, as, as they were before. Uh, then you might want to do some like optimization from time to time, see how Diago, uh, Diago trades in different conditions in the market. We realized with, with Diago I trade, the two Agos, we have some filters for different market conditions. Sometimes we want to kind of, uh, actually always, because usually these Agos work better in medium to high volatility. If it's extreme volatility, they, won't, they don't work well. If it's too low, they don't work, they don't work well either. So we've made a filter to be able to filter out to the right market condition for these algos. Now we didn't have this at first, it took us a long time to get there, but that can make a really good difference in terms of your results if you are able to filter to when the strategy works and when it doesn't work. Uh, the other example is like, right now at this moment, uh, the day trading strategy we have, so it's, it's called the Secretaria, it's based on a trend, so like following the trend, works really well right now. It's a really good strategy for this current market condition because price has been down and then went back up really quickly. And if, in Forex, it's the same. We had some crazy moves, like really low, then really high. And that means the strategy is really, really working well. The bong Jiren reversal now is a little bit less well because the fact that we don't have reversals. The, this one is based on catching reversals in the market. So like you need a, a range 
then you need some kind of reversal. So you sell the top, you buy the bottom. That, that kind of principle. But we don't have this now in the market. So that can make a very big difference in terms of your results. So not only is it important to not see it as a set, set and forget, like you don't like put it in your chart and you're done, uh, but also it's important to kind of combine strategies together to make it more reliable. So if you're going to have only one strategy, you'll have bigger drawdowns. The reason why we don't have big drawdowns on the graph I showed you before, you know, this graph over here, or even this one over here, the most recent one, is because of the fact that uh, we have two strategies combined. We have a trending one and a, and a reversal one. So they complement each other really well. When one is down, the other one is up. When one is up, the other one is down and so on. So that's a big difference here. Okay, that makes a huge difference in the results. But if you think you're gonna plug an algo on your chart, you're not gonna learn the strategy before that, and you, you'll be good forever, and then you'll pass FTMO and you'll do this and that, then I would, I would suggest you to, to reconsider using algos because you're maybe not ready yet to use algos. A lot of people who expect they can just put the algo on the chart, then be done with it, and then that's a very big problem. Now, that being said, one thing that served me really well in regards to not just how it goes with my old trading, my old life, my old business aspect too, is you gotta pick your role, and I'll explain in detail, but you gotta pick your role, and you should not do everything yourself, okay? It's crazy for someone to do the coding, the automation, the, the uh, optimization, the uh, strategy ideas, the testing, and the reporting all by themselves. It makes no sense, right? This is a lot of work. And sure, like you could do it, but I don't see the point of doing all that by myself. So I actually had to kind of find out what exactly I want to do in terms of algos. What was my job, my role? What am I the best at in terms of algos? Turns out I'm really good at, I'm really good at finding ideas for strategies, like finding things that work in the market. I'm really good at finding ways we can make the strategy better. So like, a, optimizing it, but like manually. So finding, well, this strategy works well in this condition. It could work not so well in this condition. I'm really good at that. But the coding aspect, I did it for a long time. I was not the best coder ever. I, I know like a bit of coding, but not enough to, to really make a lot out of it. And that was a big problem. So I, it's, I, I decided over time to outsource the coding to someone else, Alejandro, who uh, worked for me for many years, one of my students before. He passed through my academy, got some good success with it got some good success with it, then ended up being a coder. So he works for me now, he's coding all the algos, he's doing all the optimization work on the algos, and he's really a good help to be able to make these algos perform better overall. So if I didn't have that, if I was doing all the coding myself, all the optimization myself, all the gathering of data, and everything around myself, it would be really hard to trade algos and, and, and kind of make them to the level they are, they are at right now. You need people who are qualified in certain skills to be able to help you in those skills you're lacking. Uh, that's a really big aspect. Um, so you need, for so uh, the other thing is like you got, you got to run the algos all the time. You got to measure the performance. That you can do yourself. That's something you can do yourself, but you can also automate that. There's no point for me to be uh, like gathering all the stats of the algos where I can just like plug it to my Facebook or any other platform for my stats like I do now. It's a lot better to do that. There's no need for, yourself, for you to do it all by yourself. So pick that role you're good at, pick something you want to do, and then outsource the other stuff to other people who can do it. Uh, if you think that for you it's the best idea to, to buy an algo that's already done, already made, maybe you'll take some time to learn the strategy first, you take some time to get good at the strategy, and then you have the algo on the side that you bought for someone else, but you gotta know how to use it, and that's the big part. So for a lot of people, they're gonna try to do all themselves, like they're gonna be the coder, the optimizer, they're gonna be finding ideas for strategies, and all, all the other stuff, right? And then some of the people are gonna to wanna to be doing nothing. Oh, I just wanna buy the algo, run it, then I'll be, I'll be good with it. Uh, both ways don't work well, you gotta have a mix of both. And that's really what I recommend in terms of when it comes to algos and uh, being able to use these algos properly. So any question in the chat? I see it's very quiet now. Uh, I think you guys are sleeping in the US for sure. So uh, that's the thing about being in Asia, having a lot of subscribers in the US. But any question you have now, make sure you comment below in the chat. I'll be answering some questions for the next like maybe five, 10 minutes or so. So if you want, if you want to discuss anything else other than algos, that's fine too. Uh, also, I'm going to be relaunching my Algo Nation program in a couple of days. If you want to be notified of this, make sure you subscribe to the link below. There's only one link in the description that's going to be for that. So you enter your email there. We'll all notify you when it's live and when it's ready to go. And also you get my free course on the Bongerman Reversal Strategy. You can, so you can learn a strategy for free. I think to pay for that, the course is free. Just enter your email and you receive access to the course 
right away after. So that's going to be the first link in the description below. Uh, if you have any topic you want to cover in the future, uh, comment below the video, of course. I'll be happy to cover these topics in the future. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.